Hey, what's up, everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. All right. Today's the day. Game day, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern. Playing tournament. Lakers versus Pelicans in New Orleans. I'm not nervous. But I think my concern is that because we just beat this team two days ago, and we're going to come in with a certain relaxed attitude, even though it's a play-in tournament, you kind of have a certain cockiness about who you just beat. <laughs> you expect for them to play the same way. You expect for the same results. This is what I don't want. This is a team that beat us once this year. We've beaten them now four times, I believe it is, or three times. And we scored over 108 point, points each time. We got to score the ball against the Pelicans. We got to attack the interior and look for the adjustment to try to keep us from doing so. That's what's key to me. What adjustments have they made to stop what it is that we just did from happening? If they didn't make any adjustments, then what we did should work. Play Valanciunas off the floor early by putting him in, putting him in pick and rolls that, that exploit his slow foot speed and drive straight down the middle when that happens after you get him off the floor that's what worked if I were them I would do some things differently to assure that that's not a possibility my fear is that the Pelicans are going to put all their shooters on the floor and just launch 65 threes that's what I would do because the Lakers perimeter defense hasn't been very good and they got the shooters to do it Trigger Murphy CJ McCollum Jordan Hawkins, of whom they don't use, which is probably a grave mistake for them. Grave mistake. Um, Alvarado, of whom we will not let us uh, find ourselves off guard with him. We know Alvarado. Every time we play the New Orleans Pelicans, he's looking for the inbound steal. He didn't look forward in the last game. Expected today. Uh, Brandon Ingram, who's not a three-point shooter, but definitely could hit the shot. We know that. Valashunas could hit it too, but like I said, we play him off the floor. Zion shot it well at Duke, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> but since becoming a Pelican, hasn't really attempted too many. But it's really about Trey Murphy and CJ McCollum um, in my mind today. That's who it's about. Are they going to shoot threes? Because that's the only way they can beat us, is if they outscore us from behind the arc. And if we happen to get cold and they're shooting above 50% from the three, they win. That's how they won the game they won. Now, granted, we were off guard. Uh, that game, we were, in a, we were in a space of a, a great slump. We had lost several games in a row. Um, D'Lo didn't play in that game. That has a lot to do with things. But that's the only time New Orleans had any success against us. Otherwise, we've been blowing them out each and every time, including the last game we just saw, man. So what we just did right now was, as I said, attack the paint. Score in the paint at will, especially in the first half. We had 50 points in the paint. <laughs> and they haven't answered for that. Um, Anthony Davis is, is obviously someone who's recovering from the back, but he said he's 100% certain he's playing today. He's a game-time decision right now. I'm certain he'll play. Braun was amazing in the last game. 17 assists, 15 of them in the first half. Um, I expect for him to give it a go for sure. And uh, do the same things he did in the last game. Take it to him. Exploit Zion Williamson's inability to move left to right very quickly on defense. And um, try to try to uh, score in the paint as much as humanly possible. Uh, you know, we need Austin Reeves to have a good game. This can't be a disappearing act for him. D'Lo had a good game in the last one. We can't have any more disappearing acts from D'Lo. Anytime he disappears, we lose. It just is what it is. So if he can have a good playoffs slash play in tournament, I'm pretty damn certain it makes us a significantly more difficult team to beat. Now, of course, we know that they have a few players that I didn't mention in the, in the pregame last time that we now know more about, well, can remember to mention. That's Dyson Daniels, defensive player who we kind of leave open shooting the ball. Hopefully he doesn't start hitting shots as we scheme him open because we know how that hurts us a lot of the time. Um... And, of course, Larry Nance Jr., who I thought was going to be out for personal reasons, but ended up playing and ended up injuring Anthony Davis by pushing him in the back in the third or fourth quarter, I believe it was the fourth. So we know he's going to be out there as well. But um, 
Yeah, I, I just think that Willie Green is leaving a lot of meat on the bone, man. When you don't play Jordan Hawkins, who I think is one of the most talented shooters in basketball, um, you don't leave yourself any opportunity to blow the score open, man. You really don't. I like the idea of going to C.J. McCollum. He's been playing great. Obviously, you know, it's only so many guard spots you want to go to. Dyson Daniels defensively is interesting to me, but he's not nearly as talented of a player as Jordan Hawkins is, and I would have Jordan eating up all his minutes. And some of Alvarado's too, depending on the matchup, although Alvarado is not somebody to leave open. I was listening to Jovan Buha, and he, he kind of slid in there that, you know, we could scheme leaving open Alvarado from behind the arc if we want to choose to do that. No. No. Not him. He had games, multiple games where he's hit four threes, three threes uh, from the corner specifically. You do not at all scheme open Alvarado. He got too much heart. The game is too big. You do not scheme him open. You choose somebody else. Believe me, do not do that. <laughs> Unless you play it, we play it by ear with everybody. If he go, if he's cold, then that's a different story. But if you're doing that before the game starts, assuming that he's just going to be bricking shots, that is not the type of player to do that with. Not Jose. No. Not Trigger Murphy. And definitely not CJ. Um, so these are things that we need to understand, man. I expect for the Pelicans to play a lot better, man. I really do. I do not expect for them to play as poorly in this game as they did in the last one. They got the evidence and the data from which to make adjustments, and they have the talent to make those adjustments. I don't know that they could beat us with adjustments, but they could definitely play better. They can definitely play better. And I'm telling you, if you come in with the assumption that you're going to beat them just because you beat them in the last game, you got the wrong mentality for the playoffs. <laughs> you got the wrong mentality for the playoffs. You're going to be playing the same team over and over again from here on out. You can win game one, you can lose game two, and there's nothing strange about that. Series go 1-1 one, one every day, B. So with that being said, this is not the time to come in cocky. You must go 2-0 to win the series. Otherwise, it ain't going to be no third game to play the Pelicans. You're going down to play either Sacramento or Golden State, and Lord knows we should not want to see either one of those teams in a one-and-done, given the fact that we have had no success Damn near no success against the Golden State Warriors of Sacramento, respect. We, we had no success against Sac. Over the last two years, they've beaten us each and every time. We never beat De'Aaron Fox, and I have no reason to believe we would beat him in the next game, so we better avoid him if he happens to win that Golden State game. And you don't want to see Steph Curry. I understand there are a lot of Laker fans and uh, analysts who genuinely believe the Lakers don't have a shot against Denver. I respect that. I don't have any evidence that we have a shot against Denver. But I would rather four shots against Denver in a playoff situation than one shot against Sacramento. A full, we can't beat anyway. So if you want to make the playoffs, you're serious about making the playoffs. You definitely come out with a certain level of uh, desperation tonight. Desperation is the word. And let me tell you, beating the New Orleans Pelicans in the last game is not going to save you in this one. That game was not nearly as important as this one. Not nearly as stressful as this one. So that's what people need to understand. I get it. We're playing the same team over again. We just beat them. That's fool's gold. That is fool's gold. Adjustments are made. Teams get better. Players play differently in the next game, etc. And it's still their building. So as long as you understand that beating them in the last game ain't going to save you in this one, and that if they had to choose between the two games of which they would rather win, it's this one, then you understand how important playing well and important getting win to a win tonight truly is. I mean, you're in the playing tournament. This is what it's about. You fought your entire season. The best you were able to get was the eighth seed. You can secure your playoffs by winning today, or you could secure an opportunity that you're in a one-and-done situation and could miss the playoffs if you lose that game by losing this one. You do not want to lose this one. A lot of people may want to, to, to avoid Denver, but I'm telling you, you may not see New Oklahoma if you lose this basketball game. You may not win against Sac. In fact, it's more likely that you don't, given the history. This is why you wanted to play the Pelicans in the play-in tournament. This is why it was so important we won the last game so that we could. If you win the last one and lose this one, then it all was for naught because you're going to be in the same situation you would have been in if you lost the last one. A one-and-done would either go to State or Sacramento. 
the last win will not save you. You have to win this one. This is the most pressurized game available to us, period. Because game sevens, the way I look at game sevens is you've been looking at the same team over and over again for the last six games. You won three against them. They won three against you. You should be well prepared to go against them. You don't have that with this. You just played that team once, and that was happenstance. Now you got to come in, get it right the first time, or otherwise you're moving on to the play-in tournament game that'll kick you out. Play-in tournament, to me, is significantly more stressful because of the lack of preparation that you likely have going up against that team. The lack of familiarity, all of that. At least in a game seven, you've worked schemes, you've tried stuff, you saw things work, not work. You should come in with more data, more preparation, and more familiarity for yourselves and the team you're going up against. This doesn't afford you that. This is more pressurized than that. A lot more. And so we need to come in understanding that and not think the last win against the Pelicans is going to save us in this one. You do not get a trophy for beating them at the last game of the regular season. And it is not a failure for them to have lost to you in the last game and then come back and beat you tonight. So we have to understand the pressure is on us. They're not expected to win. They're a young team with a million years ahead of them. If for some reason that season is over, they get a lottery pick from us if they want it. That's their organization situation. Or they could defer that, of course, and, 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 and then take it from us next year when the crop of young players is more talented. They have a nice situation. We lose this game, we're at their mercy in that regard. We lose this game, and we got LeBron James in the year 21. Who knows if he comes back or resigns? Who knows? So the pressure's on the Lakers, not on the Pelicans. They could end this season, and no one's going to hurt for that. Everybody will be back next year. Everybody's only going to be a year older. It ain't like they're near the end of their careers, none of them. None of these people are near the end of their careers. Only Valen Shunis, I could argue that. He'll probably be back next year, too, so... Yeah, no. There's a Darwin that'll likely lose his job if we miss the playoffs. It's LeBron James that has to figure out his future if he doesn't make the playoffs. Like, these are things that are real. It's D'Lo who probably won't be offered another contract at a, at a, at a good amount and likely traded in the offseason if he doesn't make the playoffs. Like, these things have to be understood. Pressure's on us to not take things for granted, not lose this game on purpose for a better path in the playoffs, potentially only to probably get ousted by Golden State or sack. This ain't the game to lose. Too much is on the line for these guys collectively and individually. They need to make the playoffs. <laughs> Darvin Ham needs to make the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? So these type of things, I'm telling you, for those who want to play the OKC Thunder, I ain't certain we beating them. They're playing great ball right now. They got a bunch of young players. You don't want to play seven games with a young team. Denver ain't all that young. They really not. They get to a team that has to rest everybody so that they could be healthy enough for the playoffs. They didn't they, they weren't afforded that. Not to mention the word rest being relevant because if you lose this game, you do have to play that next play in tournament game. And then the playoffs start the day after that or, or, or uh, a day off in between, you don't get the rest. The rest is very important for an older squad, especially going into altitude which this would be in theory, of course, not if we were to lose. But nevertheless, you want the rest, Lakers. You want the rest. So you got the matchup you want. You beat this team just a day ago. Luckily enough, somehow we were able to see them again, and now we know what we have to do. We have to look for the adjustments, play it by ear. If there's an adjustment to be made, they'll make it, and we'll, we'll adjust to it. If not... Do the same thing you did in the last game. Run it down their throats. Put as much pressure on them to defend you as possible. And shoot the ball well. But the one thing I can say is expect for them to shoot a lot of threes, man. Because that's what I would do. I'd let it fly with nothing to lose. I would attempt probably 50, 55 threes tonight with none of the shooters. If I were them. Trigger Murphy would attempt about 9. CJ attempt about 10. Hawkins would attempt about 12. Like, I'm not kidding. That's exactly how I would approach this game. Because you got nothing to lose. You can't stop the Lakers in the paint. And the Lakers are terrible guarding the perimeter. Terrible. And you got some of the best shooters on the planet. 
So that's the only thing left for them to do. And so I, I, I would tell the Lakers, be ready. I don't know if that's, where they, if that's what they're going to do. I don't know what Willie Green's point of view is going to be. But there's no way in hell I'm not shooting more than 35 threes if I'm the, if I'm the Pelicans. No way in hell. Do you, I'm, I'm, th- I'm shooting. So the Lakers better be ready for that possibility, man. And, um, you know, Brandon Ingram's going to play better. He needed a day to shake off the rust. We understand how, how serious of an isolation player he could be. He's taking everybody off the dribble. He could, he could score a lot of points in a row. We've seen B.I. at his best down the stretch of basketball games. You could be up by 10. All of a sudden, he scores eight straight. I don't think he's 100% healthy, but I do understand that he shook off a lot of rust in that last one, and they probably will go to him more tonight if they don't attempt a bunch of threes. I'd imagine it'll be a heavy B.I. night. And it would make him so very happy if he could knock our team off in this playing tournament for a million different reasons. So that that's what it is, man. We're going to get some some old Lakers, man. B.I., Larry, they want to beat us. They want to beat us, man. And A.D. obviously should want to beat this team. Jackson Hayes should obviously want to beat this team, haven't played for them. So this is big, man. This is big. This is about as big as it gets. Um, and and that's, that's really what it is. The Lakers are going to be wearing yellow tonight again on their floor. And this time they're going to be wearing their Crescent City Reds, uh, which should send them back to their um, original f- uh, floor, for which we didn't see in the last one. So it's going to look like a little, it's going to look, in, you know, more traditional in regards to Pelicans. It's going to be a, you know, a home game for them, as we know. Their fans are going to be there, so will ours. And they understand what the, what the urgency is, man. This is for all the marbles. They don't want to play Sacramento or Golden State in a one-game situation no more than we do. So if you want it more than them and you're prepared for the counter and the adjustment, um, you, should have a success. you should have success. This is the matchup we wanted. But if you're not ready for the counter and you think that you're just going to waltz in there and score 50 points in the paint like you did in the last one without any resistance, uh, I, 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 would, I would be prepared to lose. I would, because I do expect Willie Green to make an adjustment. It's playoff time. So that's it, man. We can't have no off games, man. We can't have stupid plays. Can't have guys like uh, Gabe Vincent and, and Torian Prince having bad nights tonight. Spencer Dinwiddie, we can't have bad nights from none of y'all, man. Role players got to play well. Austin Reeves, d that means you. You played well in the last one. The last one ain't going to save us in this one. This game is much more important. It's an entirely new series. It's a must win even more so, etc. I can't stress it enough. The last one ain't going to save you in this one. You have to win this game. man. And you have to have a healthy fear for what happens when you don't. And you have to have a healthy respect for your opponent. Forget about the last one. Just like we always say, when you lose a basketball game and you got another one against another team, Throw that one away. Put it in the trash can. Forget about it. You got to do the same thing with this win we just had. It's the only healthy mentality. It's to not come in with anything less than the same exact urgency you had for the last one. Before you knew you had beaten this team. Before you knew you were going to score 50 points in the paint. Before you knew uh, that they were going to not play well. That Zion was going to have 12 points. You know what I'm saying? So... If you come in expecting to push them over like you did in the first one, you, you're going to be biting in the fool's goal for sure. That's exactly what you're doing. So that's what I have to say, man. Look for the counter. Look for the adjustment. Expect Zion to have 35 tonight. Expect B.I. to have 36 tonight. You have to score a lot to beat this team. And if you happen to blow them out with that mentality, perfect. But I do expect for them to score a lot more tonight. I do expect for them to make adjustments. I do expect for Willie Green to have stayed up all night trying to figure out a scheme that works for him. And I do expect that they're going to try some things they didn't try. And one thing I know they did not try was Jordan Hawkins shooting threes. So be ready, man. That's all I got to say. Alvarado will not catch us off guard. Look for the inbound still. Do not let him catch you off guard. BDL 44, I thank you all for watching.